afternoon where you are in the world. Um, uh, my name is Jasmina, uh, and this is Jasmina Brozovic Astrology. I'm a modern intuitive astrologer. I have been practicing for years. Uh, astrology is my passion since I was 11 or 12 years old, very uh, uh, from a very young age. I'm just going to go live on Instagram as well. I'll, at least I'll try. <laughs> uh, and today we're going to talk, um, and we're going to talk about what did I, where did I, I just, oops, no, I want to square, square. Share the, square, share the screen. So today uh, I want to talk about um, the full moon in Scorpio that is coming up on Tuesday, uh, April 23rd at 7.48 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'm going to talk about the energies of the full moon and for all 12 rising signs. So before I do that, I want to show you the chart. Excellent. I hope you can hear me and see me well. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, be open to ask them in the chat box, and I'll uh, answer as many uh, as much as I can. Um, yeah. So this full moon. Uh, also, before <laughs> I even start, uh, for everybody who doesn't know me, um, you can find me on YouTube uh, on just, as Jasmina Brazovic Astrology, and on Instagram. Those are my two biggest platforms. I uh, usually I have guests, uh, but today I'm on my own, uh, and I hope you will enjoy the, enjoy this presentation and find it useful. And I want this to be like an open um, a conversation, uh, nothing structural. I'm a Gemini with uh, Gemini Moon uh, and Gemini Mercury, and um, I'm a Virgo rising. For you who know astrology a little bit better, so I'm totally mercurial. I love to um, talk, communicate, interact with others. <sighs> Welcome, welcome. Okay, so let's talk about this full moon. Uh, before we start uh, to talk about this one specific, uh, which is going to happen at four degrees and 17 minutes uh, in sign of Scorpio. The chart I have in front of us is um, put for the town where I live in, in St. Catharines in Canada. So you have to worry about the placements of the planets. We're just going to look at the energies and talk about those. Uh, later, I'm going to use another software where I'm going to show you for each rising sign how this might manifest. Uh, so uh, I don't know how much you're familiar with uh, the lunar cycles. The full moon is kind of the culmination. It's where the, when, when the sun and the moon are opposing each other. And um, when the sun shines all the light to the moon. Uh, moon uh, represents in astrology uh, our sense of security, our habits, uh, where we, you know, how we nurture ourselves uh, to make how how we tend to our feelings and emotions, and how we make sure that uh, we are happy within us, how how we're happy within ourselves. Uh, so when the sun shines on the moon, it's kind of everything is highlighted. It's out in the open, out on the light, so it's not hidden anymore. So, in that sense. Uh, Wherever this is happening in your horoscope, where the Scorpio house is, those topics will be highlighted on this full moon. Uh, one of my teachers, Frank Clifford, says uh, how this the whole lunar cycle, how it works. So when we have a new moon, like we had, uh, it was just an eclipse on April uh, 8th. Uh, it's like it's, it's, it's seeding um, a seed. Uh, it's like uh, thinking about deciding, oh, I want to have a party. And then when there's a first quarter, uh, then you, you you send invitations out. I mean, the full moon is it's where the party happens. So think about uh, this party happening. And then the last quarter is when you kind of send thank you, thank you cards, for, and you, you can you can discuss with others what what was the party and what could you do better next time and st stuff like that. So we are at the party here. And who are the main actors of our party? As I mentioned, we have a moon in Scorpio, and we have Sun. In Taurus, so between Scorpio and Taurus, this is um, how we call it um, an axis positions where uh, where we talk about our values, our monies, uh, our, our possessions, our income, other people's money as well. So Scorpio represents, um, uh, you know, many people uh, will say, you know, the dark side, <laughs> something that is taboo, but actually, what Scorpio is is all about. It's about digging deep. It's about the intensity. It's about 
uh, research, uh, looking beyond the surface, um, what is hidden, uh, what we cannot see with our naked eye sometimes, but we need to uh, dig deeper and get more layers. Uh, and it's also about controls. Many of the things that Scorpio rules are actually not, not, um, not in our control. So that's why it's a very, you know, hard, uh, this hard moon, this moon in Scorpio is, is uh, it can be very hard because we cannot control uh, our emotions. It's, uh, they're so intense and deep that we feel everything um, beyond our understanding and control, as I said. So uh, moon's not particularly happy in Scorpio, uh, although getting um, uh, those deep connections, if you have a possibility uh, to establish some deep connections, bonds, one-on-one, um, um, -on -one. it's very, Scorpio needs one-on-one -on -one time, Scorpio moon needs one-on-one -on -one time uh, with people who you love and care for. Uh, Scorpio also doesn't uh, really trust people uh, because it's it's very always suspicious, always thinking about you know. That's why it likes to dig deep and find the truth. It's about truth. It's about you know um, loyalty. It's about um, uh, trusting in someone. So it takes them a long time to trust somebody as well. So this this all of these topics might come to the surface for this full moon. The trust issues. The um, manipulations, the controls, um, everything that we feel that be, is beyond our control. It can be that it is so intense. And what is the uh, uh, the feeling of this uh, a moon that is even highlighted more? It's that it's making a, a hard aspect to Pluto. As you can see, Pluto is here uh, in Aquarius. Where is it here? Here, this is Pluto. <laughs> Sorry about that. So um, when we have sun and moon, they're opposing each other, right? So uh, that's, that, that can be like a tug of war uh, energy. But then when they're both squaring Pluto, they're making um, a form that is called T-square in astrology. So the squares are uh, um, energy of action, energy of push, pushing us there, um, of not, you know, it's, it's an urge that we need to do something. So we have like a tug of war uh, between sun and uh, moon. And then on the other side, we have this Pluto, who is a planet of transformation, rebirth. Um, it's actually a modern ruler of Scorpio. So um, it has this intensity as Scorpio does. Uh, it's seeing beyond, going beyond um, uh, the surface, going deeper. So there might be a sense of... Uh, an, an urge that things are happening, that things are highlighted that we, we don't have control of. So my point is here that we want to make sure that um, we try to use energies to empower ourselves instead of uh, going into power struggles with others. Uh, yeah. So before I go into, deeper into this, uh, let's go back and see well, what was the, we call this lunar families. Uh, where, when was the seed planted for this full moon? As I mentioned before, new moons and we have first quarters and then we have full moons and last quarters. So seed for this full moon happened on 25th of October, 2022. So you can go back and think about um, that period of time. What has happened in your life? Something new that started, something that you, um, maybe some, people or events occurred that you didn't think of them then, but then now they're going to be highlighted. Something will come up in the surface. First quarter moon was last summer, 25th of July, 2023. So, um, and then we have today, we have full moon we have on the 23rd of April this year. And then um, the last quarter moon, the finalizing on everything is going to be on January 21st, 2025, and then the cycle will be complete. So think about October 2022, think about July uh, last summer, um, July 2023, and think about now. So all these things might come up uh, to the surface that happened back then. So I know, I know it's a it's a long time ago, but um, if you can think something, some especially something that um, you you maybe didn't think of it then, but then now it might you might think of it what what happened at that time. 
um, bef uh, I want to mention as well that um, this is um, very fixed energy. So what does fixed energy mean in astrology? Uh, we have three modalities. We have cardinal, fixed, and uh, mutable energy. Uh, cardinal is the energy of people who like to initiate things, to get things done, of action and drive and passion. Fixed energy is... Um, uh, those are Scorpio, Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius signs. Um, they're the ones who like stability, their endurance. They like to get things, you know, have results, get things done, but they don't like to change a lot. Those are the mutable signs. They appreciate change. They don't. They don't mind if things um, are disruptive, or they can adopt pre pretty easily. Fixed signs don't. They like the things that they are. Uh, those are the people who, you know, have have the same job for years or they don't move a lot they like their routines and habits right so when we have this um disruptive energy uh coming here especially with this pluto uh who likes to uh, shake things up on a psychological level as well with us um it, it, this this might impact um fixed signs more especially if you have um your sun moon rising or any other planet or placement in the sky between one and eight degrees uh, as i mentioned of scorpio taurus um uh, leo and aquarius and take a sip of water so as i mentioned because we have this uh, hard um, t square with pluto we might feel that um there's some things that will happen and there will, it, it will it will occur in our lives but we might feel paralyzed that we are not able to do anything about it that we don't have control uh in our lives uh we might sense there might be some manipulations going on uh scorpio is very intense as i mentioned so uh it, it's kind of you know on the full moons it's kind of um um, intense. It's like a choice point where we need to go this way or that way. There's like a direction, right? Uh, with, with this, I'm just thinking, um, you know, many, many things can come up to the surface, like secrets, um, some hidden things. Uh, Scorpio also rules other people's money and finances. So um, think about, you know, especially if you have joined money with somebody else. Uh, investments um you know maybe maybe something will we will find out that this you know investment wasn't good because there is some secret coming up about somebody who you invested the company invested in or something like that so there might be a lot of things um uh, even in your love life or you you might hear something uh, um yeah it's about it's about feeling safe and secure because this is Taurus this is the sun and the things that are actually taboo that's that is scorpio uh scorpio is one of all the taboo topics uh you know we don't talk about uh, how, mu how much how much money we have or earn uh, about sex death um all that taboo is that um, like occult um so scorpio is dealing with all of those uh and scorpio doesn't mind so all of these topics might come to the surface now so that's that's the, the the main topic of this, and Pluto will um, force us uh, to to take these things seriously and empower ourselves, and don't um, get our buttons get pushed by others, or don't get manipulated, or other people having control over us in one way or the other. Uh, yeah, it's it's also uh, it, it's it's very pressured, so we're gonna feel under pressure with this because. Um, uh, Pluto is 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 when Pluto has a transit over um, in your in your chart when it has some kind of hard aspect that is happening in your chart. Um, it can be very hard because uh, the, the, the usually the things that we, as I mentioned, don't have control of. So uh, feeling powerless uh, that can be a topic. Um, but let's let's turn it around and try to be powerful or empowered and somehow in these situations and see how can we transform how can we uh benefit from this the ruler of of this uh lunation so we the rulers uh, we always look um which planet rules um 
of each sign and especially with the events and see how that might impact this. So a modern ruler uh, of Scorpio is Pluto. So I also I mentioned um, the impact of Pluto, but the traditional ruler is Mars and Mars is going to be with Neptune. So when Mars and Neptune are together, uh, think about Mars. Mars is a warrior. Mars is a planet that likes to go the action. This is um, this is our drive. This is how we fight for the things we believe in. This is the the Mars is a planet um, who fights for the things we want, uh, and he shows us how we're gonna get those things. And when we have Neptune so close to Mars, Neptune is a planet of delusion, uh, fogginess, not having things clear, um, a lot of uncertainty. Um, when we have Mars who wants to do something, but in this case, he might not know what to do. And in this case, this moon might be confused. Like we, we might be, we might feel confused, not really knowing what to do, not having all the information, uh, maybe taking sides without looking at the other side of the picture. Uh, maybe you'll hear something or realize something, but then um, you know, you're not going to feel 100% sure that this is true. So this is what Neptune can, can bring us with this uh, Mars uh, in this sense. Um, but on the other hand, uh, Mars in Pisces is not your classic warrior. It's more of a spiritual warrior. I think uh, Astro Victor said it once, and I love that. Um, and with Neptune there, it's all about fighting for your beliefs, uh, standing up for some higher um, meaning of everything. Not about, you know, although Taurus and Scorpio in this nations are very tangible down to earth, they really like things to to to, to feel them like um, materialize, like it needs to be tangible. Pisces is not a tangible sign. Pisces uh, is connection with the divine, connection with higher consciousness. Uh, so, so there might be some kind of confusion of where to go, which path to take, what is happening. <laughs> um, and then uh, Venus uh, is ruling the sun, and Venus is in Aries in this. Yes, Venus is Aries with, with Chiron. So you can see it here. Uh, she's going to be close to, to Chiron. So Chiron is a wound healer. It's uh, it's about healing. It's about um, gaining wisdom and knowledge from um, experiencing things that um, we might not particularly like, but we are now much wiser than now that we experience them. And Venus uh, is about relationships but it's also about money so i think this topic will be about healing some issue with our value system uh with the money we have or how much are we worth or uh, how much do we invest not just um in others it can be how, how much we we invest how much time and money we invest with others and what do we get back for it because uh we want to know what is our return of investment in any case whatever we do oh hello misbehaving thank you for being here i hope i can i can share your um hell greetings i can okay awesome thank you thank you for being here yeah i was just was, i was just telling um what are the energies of this of this uh, uh, full moon? Uh, the good news is that um, today or tomorrow, depending where you live, we have this the biggest event of the year: Jupiter Uranus conjunction in uh, Taurus. So um, it's about good luck. It's about um, abund abundance, about for good fortune. Uh, but it's also um, Uran when Uranus uh, comes in the picture, it's about shaking things up. Awaking, awaking, awaking us up uh, uh, and removing us from our comfort zones. And Jupiter is um, a planet of expansion and growth, and he all, everything he touches, he enlarges. So think about what I mentioned. All these topics that I mentioned previously, they might feel over the top. They might feel that they are um, uh, this disturbing and disrupting your everyday life. So you might feel... Like the earth is shaking um, under under your feet. This is the song from Artika from 1989. I think I love that song. Uh, <laughs> I feel the earth. <laughs> I feel the earth move under my feet. That's exactly what what kind of feeling 
this might full moon uh, uh, might have um because as i mentioned no control uh, this uranus jupiter is waking us up from our um comfort zones making us uh, go away and then we have this uh, connection with our spiritual world um with mars and neptune together so overall a lot of uh, intensity a lot of um um a lot of a lot of decisions that we might because the full moon are energy of releasing so we might want to release something but be careful because i don't think we might have the the information that we need remember mercury is still retrograde it's going to be retrograde until the 25th of um, April um, and with Neptune there uh, so near Mars ruling this moon I, I really really feel that we might uh, uh, make some decision that in the long run we will then find out that we didn't have uh, all the information there's this fog disinformation um, that is happening here uh, we might also feel that maybe more compassion uh, and more kind I think this Mars and Neptune are inviting us to be more compassionate, more empathetic, more kind, and not just towards others, but towards ourselves, uh, especially regarding uh, how much money we earn, how much money we think we should have, how we deal with our money and with our values. We might be, we might be very harsh on ourselves, on ourselves, and this is actually an invitation to slow down uh, to, and to be kinder to ourselves. That's first of all. So I hope this was a general uh, description of this full moon that you find useful. Um, yes. Oh, I want to mention, what was I going to mention? I have these notes. <clears throat> no, that's it. Uh, uh, overall, spending time in nature, especially now we have a tourist season. It just started yesterday, this whole month. It's absolutely good. You, you're going to find many answers um, within yourself if you spend more time in nature. I, I just feel the, the connection with the, whatever you believe in or... Uh, um, the universe, the divinity is going to be more um, in touch if you if you spend some time in nature. I think you want to deal with this much easier. Okay, I hope you find this uh, interesting. Uh, I'm going to now start start uh, try to share something else and talk about um, what are the energies for all 12, uh, 12 um, rising signs. Tell me how are you you're doing. How what are you ex experiencing for this full full moon what are your expectations um what do you feel that you might what are the topics that might do you, do you have anything between one oops between one and eight uh, degrees of uh, fixed signs let me see so let me see if i can share my screen so misbehaving is saying i was thinking of doing lots of new things with the conjunction and full moon, but I will wait till after Mercury retrograde. Um, you can start thinking and starting things. Yeah, you don't have to pull them, uh, make them into action. But um, so Mercury retrograde is over on the twenty fifth. It's um, it, it, it's going to be still good on the twenty fifth to start for sure. I absolutely uh, believe in that. So I wanna I wanna see if I can share this. Uh, oh boy close i'm trying to share things but stop screen sharing okay please thank you for being so um oh there you go perfect is it sharing yay it's sharing okay so i want to give a, a shout out to uh london school of astrology i'm currently um um, in their uh, program, uh, learning uh, my diploma in astrology. So, so all the courtesies to London School of Astrology and Frank Cliff for um, giving me this uh, chart that I can use today to show showcase um, for all rising signs how this full moon will um, uh, occur. Uh, I also want to mention that... Um, if you are interested in learning more about astrology, please go and sign, um, and create a free a free account on London School of Astrology. There's so many free things you can, and chart examples and videos you can learn. It's it's absolutely um, amazing and uh, really really good school, good teachers, um, all the best, all the recommendations. Okay, so let's see what is happening for Aries rising. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. 
uh, why I, I'm, I'm choosing to do this this way. So it's more dynamic, so it's not that static. And I'm going to just start putting a planet so you can see uh, how this um, uh, reveals for Aries rising. So they're going to have moon here. Because moon is in Scorpio. This is a glyph for Scorpio. This is the moon. And it says here eight. This is the eighth house. So uh, for Aries, the moon is going to be in, a, in it's the house that it rules. Because uh, moon is in Scorpio and Scorpio... The natural house of Scorpio is the eighth house. So for Aries, um, of course, they're going to have uh, the sun here. So for Aries, it's especially for Aries risings, but also Aries sun, or if you have an Aries moon, this is also applicable for you. Um, this full moon will happen in the house of money, income, properties, values. Also, the second house is, skill, uh, is um, your skills and talents. And the moon, so the sun will shine the light on the moon in the eighth house, and it will, it will expose all the taboo topic for Aries rising. So <laughs> if you have any um, uh, skeletons in the closet, they pro probably will sneak out during the night and there will be the light will be on them. So um, this is this could be very hard because if you if this is this as I mentioned, this house is all about taboos. It's about sex other people's money, um, it's about death, uh, like things we don't talk about, you know, um, things we, you know, you want to go for a coffee with your friend and talk about all these things. So it's very, it's very interesting that Aries Rising might experience um, some revelation in those areas. Uh, also, it's, it's about the in, uh, investments or um, when you think about money, it can be your partner's money, but it can also be the money from, as I mentioned, your investments or the money from government. So for, it's also taxes. So if you have, if you're expecting uh, some um, tax refund or if you are expecting um, some grants or uh, something um, uh, like a help from a government this might now you get a resolution uh or um if you had any issues with uh inheritance for example this is also the house of inheritance so if you're in the middle of uh some inheritance uh, lawsuit or something this might come um you might find out what's happening there it's about trusts you know the financial trust um insurance maybe if you had a claim you might get money from insurance so it can it's it's a, it's a lot about getting getting money from others but as i said also it can be about revealing so i i do feel that this will reveal a lots of things that were hidden um and secretive things so it could be uh, regarding your sex habits, I don't know, or something like that. So think about that. Um, uh, as a, so Mar uh, Aries, your ruler is Mars. You are ruled by Mars. And Mars will uh, is in Pisces. So we're going to put Mars here uh, in the 12th house along with Neptune. So the Mars ruling you is actually also hidden. So the 12th house is the hidden house. So <clears throat> your drive, your passion, your... Um, um, your feeling, your, your want to act might not show. You might you might be confused. You might be scattered in, in many directions, but not being clear about the, what path do you take should you take. Um, you know, or so I would be. I would stay. Uh, I wouldn't in, do about. I don't, wouldn't invest, or I wouldn't do anything about that because you might not have the whole information, and you might just because you could be very impulsive and rash. Uh, as an Aries, you want to get things done. You want to be really, you know, not, not have a patient with something. Oh, I just would do it. But in this case, I would, because it's it's a very sensitive um, area of your life, you know, about your income and, you know, how much you you, you earn and what you have. Uh, it can be shaken up, but mis, misinformation here. Okay. And Pluto, as I mentioned, Pluto is in Aquarius. <clears throat> Aquarius here. Okay, so there's as so I'm gonna to try to draw the line so to show you that the moon is opposing sun, and then they're both oops, they're both squaring this Pluto. I hope you find this fun. I, I thought maybe it would be a fun way to show there you go. So this is what we call a T square, see? And the, the, the axis point of, of this is um is this Pluto right here. 
So this might manifest through fr through friendships and groups and communities. So if you have any involvement, if you have uh, your money, um, maybe if you gave money to some charity, because this is a house of charities, uh, you might find out that this charity was a fraud. This could be a, this could be a situation as well. So, or uh, or if you invested uh, your time uh, uh, in in some kind of groups or communities. Also, uh, the eleven house is a house of retirement. So, if you have any money in retirement funds, which is, you know, it can be connected with the eight and the eleven house as a topic. So, just make sure that you don't do anything rash and impulsive regarding your finances. Pluto is, you know, is also a planet. Yes, transformation. Yes, um, it can bring something uh, and better. But before he does that, he destroys everything that exists. So he literally something needs to die for a new thing to be born. So that's Pluto. So you might lose everything, you know, I don't want, but I'm just saying it could be like, you know, literally confusion and, um, you know, loss of things before something new happens. And this is also about friendship. So think about, can you trust your friends? Scorpio moon is always, as I mentioned in the beginning, is, is asking us, can we trust? Who can we trust? Who are our friends? Who is on our side? So think about that especially about your friendship because there might be some you know situations some friends that you you know that um they misused you or didn't or but you find out that they were not trustworthy or loyal to you or they used you or they or they manip manipulated you that's pluto is manipulation oh hi da damien is it damien i hope i said it correctly hi good evening thank you for joining welcome to my channel um yeah so so that might be a thing uh, pluto is also about wealth so wealthy, wealthy people, you know, um, uh, it can it can represent mafia as well. I know I'm going to extremes now, but think about you know uh, criminals, mafias, or just you know um, shady people. So and these are these are this is your community and groups and you know who you, who you hang around with your friendship. So think about if you have you know so this, some of these topics might come um, to the surface. Uh, what is good, as I mentioned, so we're going to say, so with, with this sun, we have this Uranus and Jupiter conjunction here. So there, there might be some luck. There's un unexpected things. Um, um, oh, thank you, Damien. Damien, okay. Damien, okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. So there might be some good luck about, um, you know, uh, about maybe some other uh, sources of income because when Uranus and, and Jupiter are together, you must find some some new job or some other source of income, or it can be literally represents commissions or freelancing or jobs that are not steady income. Okay, although this is in Taurus, I would still maybe think that this might something be not 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 steady, but something new and exciting. So this is a good side of it, but still be careful. So it's not you know this is really harsh energy. This T square is really it's one of the hardest uh, aspect shapes in in astrology. It really pushes us to. Um, to deal with stuff that it's it's not 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 in an easy way, okay. And then of course we have a Saturn in Pisces as well. I forgot to um, to put him here as well. So um, you know the 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 authority. You know I think Aries rising might be really, you know this is the house of subconscious of not knowing not tangible things. So Aries rising might might feel a little bit confused in that sense. So I wouldn't make any big decisions until. At least Mercury goes direct, and uh, and when um, when Mars goes into Aries, and it's going to go into Aries very soon, and I think next month. So you're going to be, you're going to feel much better. You're going to, feel, you're going to have much more energy. Uh, you're going to feel you're going to feel much better because it's going to be your, in your sign, um, giving you more stamina. So until then, stay low. Don't do much. Um, this is affecting your your money. Okay. Okay, so for Taurus, so this, this was for Aries Rising. If you have any questions, if you watch the replay later, just sh uh, send me a uh, shoot a comment below. I'll I'll really reply to every I reply to every comment. So okay, so rotate. So let's go and see Taurus Rising. Okay, so this is interesting because it's about you and the moon is shining light on your partner. So for Taurus, the the everything is gonna be with your partner because you have your partners uh, is in, in Scorpio house here. So you might feel a little bit, uh, you know, you might you might find out something about your partner or 
uh, about money, or maybe maybe your partner will um, uh, will will have will reveal some secrets about themselves. <laughs> so you never know uh, what's going to happen here. And then Pluto is um, it, it, this might also be more about your partner and and partner's life. And here, this is not just a romantic partner. So seventh house is all one on one relationships. So it could be your business partner, it could be your clients, if you have clients, if you see um, a client, so that's going to be also about that. Um, it's it's literally one-on-ones that you have and um, that you interact uh, in, in everyday life, and something might come in, in, into their lives, not particularly yours, okay? But you are going to shine the light on it, you know, and because Pluto is involved, and uh, Pluto is here in the 10th house, so I'm going to draw a line again. So for you, it's, it's this. So this is the opposition, tug of war. And then we're going to have Pluto. Oops. See this T square. Oops. Me and technology. See? I was going to say this is this is involved with um, with your career as well. So look. This is in your 10th house. So the axis of this T-square is in the 10th house of your career, of your reputation, of your uh, fame, uh, of your how you uh, um, advertise yourself, promote yourself, how are you seen in the world. Um, so th this can be, you know, literally uh, uh, something that you find out about your partnerships that might reflect on your career. So you might some some you have some revelation that might impact your career at the end um, that you find out about this Mars uh, that is ruling this uh, moon. So this is the modern ruler is Scorpio. So this is directly connected, as I mentioned, with your career. It can be something about you know, Pluto in the tenth. It can be about powerful managers, or you know, or maybe some secrets will come up with, or regarding your managers. Or um, some wealth wealth people who is you know who is investing in your company maybe you know secret partnerships or um, some kind of situations in the can can come up with that situation so um, this is really really interesting and then Mars uh, is here in the eleventh house with Neptune and Saturn so these are the glyphs. Um, this is the glyph for Taurus, and uh, we go around, and these are the just the glyphs of the planets. So I hope, as I as I tell them, that you now already know them. So there is a, a, a because Mars is ruling more modern uh, traditional ruler of this moon is Mars, uh, and it's in Pisces. And I said lots of misinformation. So here you might um, real your your friends or your community or your groups or something coming up from um, from your tribe might be uh you might there might be not enough information or, or mis misunderstandings or um not having the clear vision that's that's what this is all about and this is ruling this moon so you might think that you know something about your partnerships or, or something that is involving here but i think there's a, there's going to be uh there's, there's going to be a deeper level with this full moon like you know there's going to be like um um I don't know. It's about maybe maybe you're going to realize some truth that you didn't know so far. So, but I, as I said, for everybody, I would take this with a grain of salt just because this Mars is with Neptune and we don't know. And Mercury, I didn't put Mercury last time, but Mercury retrograde is still in Aries here. And then we have Venus in Aries. So Mercury is still retrograde until the 25th. This, this will occur on the 23rd, but Mercury is retrograde on the 25th. Uh, and then you know, Mercury is a, is, is a messenger. He, he gives us information and it's hidden in your 12th house here, Taurus, for your Taurus people. Mm -hmm. And because it's hidden in the 12th house, what what did he, what, what, what will he say? You know, you don't, so it's double whammy. You don't know what is happening. You don't know, and it's a retrograde. So uh, think about, you know, ev everything that is revealed for this full moon, um, wait until, you know, don't react. Don't make a decision now. Uh, wait until kind of the, the the everything settles down a little bit, and then you it, you will you will see things much much clearly. Okay. Uh, also, Venus ruling this sun is also in, in in your hidden house. So, for you, Taurus, you really won't have um, that much 
clarity in this sense. And it can affect, you know, all your partnerships and your career. Yeah. Well, good luck. <laughs> it's not that bad. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's about a lot of uh it's, a, it's about others, not you. So you you will might feel that you don't have a control, although you have Jupiter and, and Uranus here in the first house helping you, right? So you do have, um, you, you you will feel more optimistic and you might feel you want to change some things because this Uranus is going to push you. Oh, do, do some changes. But think before you're making a decision. As I said, Mercury still retrograde is in your hidden house and Mars rolling this moon, it's in with Neptune. So, you know, you know, I know you have the urge to do maybe, although you like stability, this time you might you might feel it. Uh, you know, if this this will be, really impact your your life and your decisions. So, take it easy. You know, slow. You know, take it easy. So, be your own best advisor. Awesome. Okay, let's go to Gemini. So for Gemini, I hope you find this fun. I I find this feel very fun to to work with. So. I hope you find you find it good as well. Let me take a little break. Okay, so for Gemini rising, Sun and Moon. Uh, uh, this Moon will be in Scorpio house. It's in the sixth house, and Sun. Ooh, Damien. Okay, this is then for you. Awesome. Okay, so Moon is in your house of work, health. Uh, everyday life, your routines. So think about what the sun is in the 12th house. It's The sun is really hidden for you. You know, it's not, it's not making any impact, but it's really shining the light on your everyday life. So what are your um, habits? Do you have, you know, it's going to shine light on some, some bad habits maybe that, that you have, or uh, what's your diet? Or um, how is how is this going to impact your um, co-workers? Or if you have your own business, maybe your employees. Uh, if you're a landlord, your tenants. This is all about, you know, um, people who work for you and, you know, how, how do you spend your every day? What is happening in everyday life? So this can be a, a really dynamic. I would um, suggest that um, if, if something, a health issue comes up in this situation, uh, please see a doctor. Don't disregard this. This is the opportunity for you, you know, um, for, for to change some things, right? Um, yeah, especially with with um, Scorpio, their uh, your reproductive <laughs> organs. I know I have to I have to say it, but it's it take care of those. Plant your bad eating habits. Oh, no, yeah. See, <laughs> so I hope they didn't uh, impact your everyday life. So maybe try to, to not maybe to make some big changes, but a little small changes that that might help, right? Because it it, it is helpful. Little by little, day by day, one thing. I say, you know, if you, if you drink um, uh, green tea, try doing um, mint tea for a change. Stuff like that, right? Or if you like chips, instead of two bags, just eat one. You know, it's a it's a small a small thing. Okay, and then Pluto is gonna be in your ninth house here. Okay, so as I mentioned, the sun is shining the light on your work, in your everyday life, and then Pluto is in your is your ninth house. So, so there's this 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 hard energy that is happening. Oops, the um the app. Oops. Me and technology, okay. Seriously, really, okay. There you go, awesome. Woohoo! Okay, so Pluto, as app, so as I said, he's going to transform something, he's going to make things change. And this is the house of travel. Uh, oh, thank you, Cla Chiara. Is it Chiara? Thank you so much. Oh. Oh, taking this opportunity time to bless you just mean that you're shining the light in such a way this oh thank you so much you mean so much to me oh thank you oh, you will make me cry <laughs> thanks so much i appreciate it really um uh so as i mentioned so this this so think about this is a house of travel this is a house of um of your belief system of your higher higher education so if you are in school or are you dealing or, or are you thinking of doing phd or something else you might find some power struggles in that area some control issues or if you feel there is a, a a belief system that is put on you you might want to you know 
change something. So this might be a very like a shaking thing of you know who who, who you believe in, what you want to do, like your visions and dreams. This is a house of exploration of um of your vision, right? So this might really change. You might feel that you know, but you were believing and it wasn't good enough. It wasn't the truth. So this is also about truth. Is the thing you believe in is true? What is happening? So you might uh, start doubting yourself. But still, as I mentioned, the ruler of this Mars, I have to go back on Mars, is in Pisces. So here with Neptune and Saturn. So for Gemini's rising uh, or suns, um, this moon. So you might feel that you want to break free from dogma, break free from the um, um, from the belief system that was set on you uh, but you might also not have all the information in it right and this can imp impact your you know maybe maybe your your eating habits uh how you eat and stuff what you do are maybe um uh conditioned by the your belief system so this, this might also be a problem and then um there there might be some issues with your authority as well at work and career because of because of all of this you might feel that you know um or people lying your mars neptune can be lying and and this is all about seeking the truth so you might, you might find that somebody was lying at you like a manager or something happened and then you know your your, your faith you're, lo you're losing faith so that's that's something to think about right um Oh, Kiara. Oh, thank you so much. You're going to make me cry. I, I love this. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm really happy that I find that you find this helpful and that you find me. Um, uh, yes, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm, I usually have guests and I usually talk to somebody. This is the first time that I'm actually doing it by myself. So as a true Gemini, I always like to talk to people and socialize and network. But here I am. So <laughs> and talking to all of you, and I really appreciate you being here and, and interacting with me. I feel not alone and uh, really good. And if you have any questions, don't be a stranger. Okay. So yeah. So as I said, so this could be a situation um, really about how your belief system impacts your um, everyday life. And some changes might, you know, you might, some somebody else might force some changes on you that you don't like. Um, yeah. And then but you're gonna, you're probably gonna have sociological and subconscious, uh, sub subconscious. Oh, I'm doing. Thank you, misbehaving. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. I'm trying to talk slowly because I'm a very, very fast talker usually. So I'm trying to really talk slowly. Oh, thank you, Damien. Thank you, guys. Um, for you to guys understand me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyway, so you might still be psychologically stronger than you think because Jupiter is your in your 12th house. And usually people who are born with Jupiter in the 12th house, they we say that they have like a guardian, guardian angel uh, watching over them, okay? So with all these things happening, you're going to have like a little guardian angel watching over you, okay? Postpone all decision-making at least until Mercury goes retrograde. I'm going to repeat this, okay? So until after the 25th, okay? Awesome. So good luck, Demonize. Okay. Next in line, we have Cancer Risings. And Cancer, cancer Risings, this is always important, all the lunations, because they are ruled by, by the moon. So Cancer, the ruler of Cancer is moon. Um, and that, that's always say for Cancerians often. We say they're very moody because, unfortunately, they do change moods. Uh, as the uh, as the moon changes and moon changes sign every two and a half days uh, <laughs> yeah it's okay you have some other angel somewhere i'm sure misbehaving don't worry <laughs> so this uh, all the full moons and new moons impact uh cancer risings or cancer suns and moons uh um very much because they're literally can feel they they're very emotional they can feel all these changes coming up Okay, so let's see where the moon is for you guys. It's in your fifth house. And then, of course, sun is in the 11th house. Okay. So the fifth house is a house of uh, creativity, of your children, um, of uh, romance, of just fun and joy in general. It's a it's the Leo house. It's something doing something from your heart, being authentic, being yourself. Um, uh, so the sun will shine the light 
on your kids if you have them or on your creative projects or if you are in not in a serious partnership but you have like a fling it's a house of flirt or uh, you know if you want if you have somebody you know that's like that so you know you might there's you might learn some truth about them as well um it, because it's it's you know it's a full moon uh many many things can come up with this maybe you realize that you know some projects that you were working on are no longer working for you as i said because pluto is involved many of us will may probably make some decisions and changes where are we going from now what do we need to release and how to proceed from now on but as i said we, we will probably want to be to do and start doing things right away but i will still wait for a second at least until Mars moves into Aries and Mercury goes direct, because it's it's going to be really hard um, to make clear decisions with all the information that we need to, to make a healthy decision, okay? But at least think about it, at least watch out, like a, in a true Scorpio fashion, uh, keep your eyes and ears and open and, and look and just observe. Scorpio is observer. You know how they have this a penetrating laser look because they can you know just scan everything so so don't uh be gullible in a sense you think twice before you know there's because there's a lot of things that you know um be true scorpio be kind of a little bit of reserved and think oh yeah you know um what is happening now so this for the challenges for you cancer risings are going to be in the eighth house which is a scorpio house that i explained so it is going to be, you know, maybe about uh, uh, your, uh, because this is also a house of your partner's money, but also your kids are involved. So are there anything, is, if you are sharing custody or if you have some, you know, sharing kids with their partner or there's, um, um, there's many, many situations that can be, what about money? Maybe, maybe, you, maybe there's a trust fund you have for your kid or something, or something that might happen in that sense that is going to, um, that you're going to feel that you don't have control of you know maybe you know um uh, or if you want to if, if you want to if you have in a, in, a, in a creative project and you're looking for funding maybe you want to uh maybe you're looking for funding so before you actually go and do that um uh, careful because many secrets can be here people can promise you something and then they don't deliver right um and then you you can you know lose money or you have your hopes up and then nothing happens from, from it so um this is as I said, this is a house of flirt and romance, but this is a house of deep, intimate connections. So, so there is going to be some changes in that sense. Are you going to transform your relationship that is not so serious into something more serious? But then, what are you getting from it? Is it this is something? Is this really something that you want? So think about that. Um, and these are these are the sun is in your friendship house. So this all might come up from you know. Some friendships might become, some friends might become lovers in that sense, <laughs> or there could be some connections between friends or flirtation or partnerships, whatever your situation is. Um, yeah, so this can reveal some of those things. And what what is the money you are invested with others? What what you know? What do you have with others that might impact this um, this area? This is a gambling house as well. So uh, you know. Huh. Where's let's so let's see where the Taurus is. So Taurus here, and you have Jupiter and Uranus with the Sun here uh, in the house of friendships and communities and groups. So there might be some you know um, maybe some fortune there. Um, should you gamble? I don't think so. I, I you know you can try. You know there's some sun lighting at this uh, of this uh, grand conjunction shining some light in a house of fun and joy. Um, Maybe you you feel that you don't you don't you're not able to have fun and joy because of you know the these obligations that are um, um, you know that are put on you. But I think um, the, the luck might come from your friendships, and then you know maybe they can ease your pain in a sense if you're having some uh, issues with your kids or your partnership uh, in this, or just everything that you that you find that that it's a new truth or something new happens. Take it with a grain of salt. Okay, you might not have all the information, as I said. So, um, yeah, and Mercury retrograde is in your house of um, with Venus in your house of career. So this might also be my my miscommunications and many things happening at your work that you know is just not clear or you know not having a, a great sense of understanding here. So, 
anyway try to try to have some fun because sun is sun is lighting the sun here uh, the the light on your faith house so try to have some joy and fun in general or spend some time with your kids you know maybe you find some if you have kids or with creative projects just get involved more in just doing it not making a decision about it i would suggest that that would be a good one okay okay we are now leo rising so leo is uh ruled by the sun and uh sun is in taurus in the career sector okay so for you leos um sun is in career sector but it's shining the light on your family um so this this might be a little bit of conflict of interest between uh you know wanting to do something for your career especially because you have the jupiter and uranus here so there might be some you know promotions or raises or something happening but then the sun is shining light on your, on your family and you are needed here so that's might be a trouble for you uh leo's rising because your family might need you and you might feel obligated towards them but then you have so many things going on in your career um so many you know opportunities that are coming up and you want to take them you don't want to miss anything uh but then your family might you know may need you more and you need much sometime um yeah um thank you damien thank you so much yes i'm really trying um i'm really trying to i hope you find this fun and useful i really i really enjoyed this i really enjoyed this thank you so much okay and then pluto um pluto is in the seventh house of your partners so look at that so this so this acts, this is not really easy for you, Leo's, in Leo's risings. First of all, you're not a center of attention because the sun the, is shining light on the moon and not on you because you, you are the sun, right? And then um, your partner, you know, might manipulate you or have some control over you or in, in not over you, but maybe in a situation like, you know, oh, you know, like... Um, you always work you think about yourself you know we have kids we have this and that so your your partner might be the 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 problem in this case you know um you know or trust issues with your partner do you really trust them you know are they manipulating you to get their own gain and you cannot be free to do what you want or, or your a creative authentic self so this might be some troubles this is not an easy you know and especially because this is happening uh, in astrology we say everything that is happening in the first fourth seven and a tenth house those are the house of houses of action uh when when you have things going on in those houses there are more uh, more things are happening more more things are uh, uh are really you know they're, they're really they are the houses that are shown and out there and there's a lot of dynamics in them so those those are the action houses so you have like three action houses here happening uh for leo risings not an easy full moon at all because you you want to be a leader here you're a leader you want to be you know here you want to lead you want to you have this jupiter uranus just the conjunction happening just a couple of days before this full moon you are so you know enthusiastic about where you're going in your career and then you know your partner and then your family life um, can pull you down this can also mean um not just immediate family but where you're coming from so the four house is also your um ancestries or your early childhood so there can be some secrets maybe revealed from you know from when you were a kid and you didn't know about you know or um, there's or some kind of light will be shine on shine on or something from your childhood from early upbringing might come up and um disrupt your um your blessings here in your career right so you cannot focus on that so um Let's see where the moon is. So the moon, the Mars and Neptune and Saturn are in your house of um, of other people's money and partners' money. So think about partner is the axis of this tension, okay, this intensity, and then this is also partners' money. So there's like a, a nebulousness here, right? Misinformation, you know, you know. Look at this restriction, right? This is all what I hear, see here, this in this. You know, like like you have no help from from other people in that sense so um what would be my advice would be to take a deep breath i know you can be very proud leos and then your pride may just hurt you so um before you make any decisions give it some time uh some things might just resolve by itself uh as i said you know mercury retrograde here 
um, don't travel. Not, not now. Don't, don't make any plans for traveling and, until Mercury goes direct because it's in your travel house. Um, and then when, when when Mars goes into Aries soon, you're gonna feel much better. You know, it's gonna it's, so it, it, it's gonna make you you know you're gonna be feel much freer and 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 prone to do things. So lay low, take a deep breath. Don't get your buttons pushed. This is the the things when you can get your really buttons pushed and then you can react and then you're gonna be sorry later because things are not clear okay so you might misunderstand something because of your pride or you know so yeah and then venus is also here so um yeah this mercury actually rules your house of money and it's retrograde so you know all these dynamics here don't don't make any investments this is nebulousness don't don't really don't do anything that i know you feel like very good and your reputation, your and, and, and you know, who you are, and your fame like you really like a, you are a king with this, but then other things are really not supporting that right now, okay? So, it'll be better, it's gonna be better soon for you. So, for now, take it easy, okay? And Virgos, Virgo risings, okay? Look at that. So, the moon is in the third house of communication um learning uh, reading teaching not teaching is more than a house but still like a learning or um, um it's also about siblings it's, it's about neighbors it's about local local community or neighborhood um it's a gemini house it's about um mobility and movement um and how you commute every day um through your um in, environment where you live and then there, there's a sun um in the ninth house so these are both uh learning houses as i call them you know it's about uh, exploring your knowledge um you know so so this this might be you know also shine the sun is shining light on the way you communicate with others maybe there's going to be you know situation or maybe you find out something about your siblings that you didn't know or your neighbors some secrets about you know what is happening in the neighborhood or um, you know, if you're involved in the local community, there's going to be um, some things coming up um, your way uh, as well. And then Pluto um, is in, in everyday life, right? In your in your everyday work life. So, so sun is shining uh, on this. Oh, this is also a, a, a good thing because um, a good thing. Not, I don't know if it's a good thing, but think about uh, this is the third house also about your cars and mobility and and stuff like that so when there's a, a, a sun shining the light here and it's in and the pluto is in this uh, in this axis and on, oh my god in your everyday habits and stuff if your habit is to drive every day maybe you think about maybe something with your car might happen <laughs> just a thought um uh, this is uh, this is gonna this might impact your health i talked about for gemini's risings um then the moon there but you have this, this pluto there and pluto is um you know about showing some um situations um something really if you're not taking care of your health oh hi hannah this is my first first time this is my first live just by myself so there you go <laughs> thank you for joining and for saying hi i appreciate it thank you yeah so um pluto uh is gonna maybe reveal something you know it's about um uh, out, you can it's out of control as i mentioned so you might not feel that you have control of your everyday life of your routines maybe some interruptions because of your uh you know of, of, of this uh third house things communication stuff that you do maybe something is um not good at that sense and then it's going to interrupt your hi nicole hi thank you guys for joining i really appreciate it thank you so much uh no i, I lose my line of thought when you, when you say hi but i love it okay thank you so much i really appreciate it yeah um especially so i wanted, I wanted to say that yes mars and neptune and saturn are in the in the house of um where's the saturn here it is in the of the partnerships so um all these one-on-one -on -one relationships, your business partner, your romantic partners, your clients, you know, there might be some misunderstanding, misinformation with them. And this uh, um, Mars, 
is a traditional rule of this. So if if you have like um, um I think the communication is going to be impacted with you, Virgo rising uh, especially. Uh, misinformation, lies. This is also lies, unfortunately. Uh, misinformation, miscommunication, and you know, and because of that, uh, although this 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 will this Pluto will call it for, for um, transforming um, your habits and and stuff, but don't make any decision because you might make decisions based on the wrong information for sure. You are, I think, the most impacted on uh, uh, on that level. And you, as Virgo risings, you you do uh, uh, appreciate health and and hygiene. Um, you know, so if you so this you, uh, nurture that. So I would say nurture. You know, nurture your hygiene, nurture your diet, nurture how you you, know, you do things every day. Um, don't get miss, don't get influenced by others and uh, their um, way of doing things. Okay, that would be my that would be my take on this. And <clears throat> you have still Mercury retrograde here in the eighth house, so also don't no investments for you. Um, just because okay I, I forgot to put this just because the mercury retrograde here you know uh, and this mercury retrograde is ruling is ruling um your completely chart your son who you are so it's in the house of of pluto so there is like a lot of a lot of dynamics that you know because of the misinformation you might you know not really um make good choices about your health especially everyday stuff yeah and then uh, I just want to mention that uh, Jupiter and Uranus are here with Sun in your ninth house. Um, so you might be drawn to traveling. So I would actually, I would recommend that you rather travel some long distance than, uh, than staying in your environment, a local environment. Because in, in local, every if you, if you take a break for your everyday routine and from your local environment and just go somewhere and explore something new, something where, where it's, Far, far away. I think you might might benefit from it more because everyday life will just um, put pressure on you. You're gonna feel um, not not good, like psychologically not really good. So, if you feel good, remove yourself for a while from all that number of retrograde. Still, you know, but if you can, I would risk it because you have Jupiter here. I would risk it. Um, yeah, just because I'm Virgo rising, so I'm thinking, yeah, maybe I should just. <laughs> Take a vacation, yeah. So take a vacation. We're going to rise. Yeah. I would suggest that, um, just because because I think the, the everyday life is putting much, too much uh, psychological pressure on you. You know, this is also you know um, your your mental health in a way. Okay. Good luck, Virgo risings. Cool. Okay, we are halfway there. Thank you for sticking up with me. Okay, cool. Ooh, an hour and seven minutes. Wow. I can really talk. Okay, let's go. I have to quick this wrap it up. Okay, Libra, Libra risings. Um, the moon is in the second house and the sun is in the eighth. So you have the opposite from Aries. So Aries had the, the light shine in the eighth house, but you do have the light shone shine. Uh, in your second house so the sun is highlighting your income how you make your money what are your skills and skills and talents so full moon when it shines you know as i mentioned in the beginning yeah yeah misbehaving finally right <laughs> okay <sighs> take a deep breath thank you thank you clara take a deep, chiara take a deep breath okay so since the moon is shining, so since the sun is shining the light on your income and your skills and your talents, think about what um, what skills and talents you want to release and which ones you want to improve. Okay, because Scorpio likes to you know um, research and make it better. And, and you know, so I think I like this. I like this that this is in your second house of improving your finances in a way. Um, Pluto is in the fifth house. So let's see. So the sun, moon. Where is the information coming? Okay. So Libras, you for the last year since last July until um, uh, 
January next year, you have this nodes and eclipses in your sign and your opposite side of Aries. So it's been very dynamic for you uh, about your relationships, about uh, being your true self and finding the truth and who you really are. And as I mentioned, this full moon is about finding the truth, is, is about um, digging deep and beyond the surface. So this might actually help you in a way, um, um, you know, finding your values. This is also about your value system, right? So think about what you value uh, uh, um, and how can you, you know, maybe uh, release some things that you don't find available anymore to be your authentic selves. Still, don't make a, a drastic decisions until um, uh, Mercury goes direct on the 25th because it's in your first house. You might be delusioned about, you know, or mis misguided in a sense, not having the, the information. Um, and then oh, Mercury is here. Oh, my God. In the seventh house. So I was going to say your partner. See, uh, Venus is about is, is ruling your sign. It's in a house of partnerships and Mercury retrograde in a house of partners. And this is also business partners, as I mentioned, and one-on-ones and clients. And uh, so th the way they communicate might not be as clear. And Mars is, is you know, here with, um, with Neptune and Saturn in your everyday stuff. So sun is shining the light on your values and income there is a, a pluto is in your in your house of fun and joy so yeah you, you might feel psychologically kind of um hard to, to have some fun and joy which you might feel really really you know struggling with that um with, with pluto being in that house or um if you have kids your kids might have some uh, manipulation games with playing with you or um or not being able to be creative as you wish just because you know or may maybe you need to let go of some projects that are not working for you you know as i said a little dying and then starting something new um uh so and this pluto is a modern ruler of this so there's like a connection between your projects and making money and then also the traditional ruler is here with neptune in your everyday work so there might be some misguidance in in you know in your habits and the way you do things um you know maybe you want to change something uh regarding your creativity but then your everyday stuff you might not be able to because your information is not uh, all there um and your partner might have the bigger role uh, than you wish in all this situation so i would focus on um under on, of, of releasing the things that no longer serve me in my creativity department or in my skills and talents, and then think about improving those that do serve me and that, and that will lead me to be my authentic self. Because you as Leo Rising, you're always thinking about others, about partners, and now this uh, Venus um, that rules you is in your house of partnerships. So you might feel that you know, you're still influenced by your partner a lot um, or your partnerships and not thinking clearly. And it's going to be like that until January next year. So think about how can you um, be less dependent on others and making decisions for yourself, especially about the things that you find, where you find joy and happiness. Okay, so think about that. And um, everyday routine, they might really influence, you know, there might be some information that you don't have regarding those as well. Yeah. Good luck, good luck, Libra. I think I think um, as long as you are true to yourself and try to be less dependent on others, you will do good. I know it's not, it's easier said than done, but especially in, with this axis, you know, you know, this is other people's. This is this is also your partner's money here, where the sun is. So you'll feel like, oh, you know, I depend on my partner, and it's in, in in their money, but you don't actually. I think this now it's it's this moon. A full moon is on your income and on your talents here. Yeah, good luck. Okay. Okay, and now let's go to Scorpio. So this is very important, of course, as I mentioned, for all fixed signs, especially for Scorpios, because this uh, the the sun is uh, shining the light on them, on their who they are, uh, their physical body. You know, uh, with moon in the first house and in Scorpio. It's said you know it's, a, it's an intense moon and you know you might you, you might feel overwhelmed um there's like a uh, uh in, 
intensity about, you know, um, because Scorpio wants to bond, wants to be intimate, wants to connect on a deeper level. Scorpio really this this despises superficiality, um, and this is this is in your axis uh, of your um, your relationships. It's about you and your partner. Who is the partner is shining the light on you. So, and Pluto is in your house of home, and you know who you, who you in your family. So there might be really some dynamic going on uh, in your family life, in your partnership's life about, you know, this, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is also a lot about secrets and revealing secrets. So, you know, whatever you, whatever you find out, whatever you find out now, take it also with a grain of salt. I know you can be, um, you know, with Scorpios, if they find out that you lied to them or something, you know, they're very dismissive in that sense, you know, no more, no more going back. But then maybe you don't have all the information yet. Okay. Uh, this, this psychological pressure for, from your family. I really, I'm, I'm struggling. Okay. Um, you know, about your partnerships, about your family, some psychological issues coming up some secrets this is this is also this this can also um talk about the secrets you have from your uh, early childhood you know um you know people who born with Pluto in the fourth house usually had you know power struggles power dynamics within their parents um you know so you might also find that, that that's you know some games that everybody's playing you know um blackmailing with 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 secrets um you know so that all this all these topics it's, it's, it's not an easy full moon for you guys not not really uh because you know as i mentioned before when, when you have things ha happening in the first fourth tenth and the seventh house those are very active very out there those are houses of action so um you know um not not an easy energy for sure so you know you are a good um strategizer in general you're you're very good with strategizing um and you are have great bullshit bullshit filters i have to say it uh because you know good psychologists your scorpios are really really uh, good in, in you know finding out the truth so nobody can really lie to you in that sense but this can reveal some some things that you might not appreciate and then you might feel um you know you might you might lose trust in somebody that's what i'm most afraid um in, in this sense well thank you damien thank you <laughs> i appreciate i appreciate all your support guys really helping you really helping me for my first debut okay i was being solo here oh thank you kiara thank you i appreciate it yeah i'm thinking about this this will be really uh eye-opening for you that's right that would be the great uh, word eye-opening um and i want to say so you have your partner you know so your partner also might want to break free because your partner has this uranus uh with jupiter you know feeling overly confident and then Ju uranus all, all obviously wants to be free and you know um, they might feel overly confident and you know and just you know so there, there's gonna be really a dynamic between you and your partnerships and you might you know you, you'll see how it goes i don't want to scare you but you know you you know better than anybody what's good for you and you won't take um anybody's you know <laughs> things so nobody nobody can man manipulate you anyway so even if they try they're gone forever so they might be some kind of you know because it's a full moon it's a releasing you might need to release some of these relationships that you don't find no longer you cannot trust some people anymore is it family is it partnerships business personal one-on-ones clients whatever um yeah and then this mars and neptune and saturn um in your in your fifth house of joint happiness there's restriction there's uh not really clear and so you, you you might feel you know not as happy and joyful as you wished um you know if it's feeling restricted you know you, you definitely don't 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 play a lot or or any lottery for you guys because it's in your fifth house of lottery i don't know if, I, don't, I don't think you you know i wouldn't recommend it in any case right um and then there's mercury retrograde in your sixth house of everyday life uh also it's still retrograde so even if something happens or 
you know something might, might come up give it a few di a few days take you know sleep on it um i know you're you know you're very black and white uh you're cold and hot when it needs to be um um just give it some time and then maybe you know you misunderstood something or somebody expressed themselves in a wrong way because they're very you know your partnerships are very overly confident here so um anyway so that may be the case for you um in any way whatever happens good or bad it's it's good for uh for the future i always think it's for the long run it's it, even if it doesn't seem so at the moment for the long run it's gonna uh, give you uh good okay Good luck, Scorpios. Not an easy one for you, but you can take. If anybody can do this, you can, guys, for sure. Awesome. Okay. And now we have Sag rising, Sagittarius, the great optimists of the zodiac. Okay. So moon, mm, the hidden moon. So when the moon is in the 12th house, this is the this is the axis of health and mental health, and you know. This is the best time to spend some time alone. I know that you as a Sag, people, Sag Rising and Sag Suns, you really like to party and, you know, have fun and explore and travel. You know, this might be, you know, mentally something hard for you or um, if you really suffer from, from anything, please take care of yourself. This is this is about your health and your mental health for sure. Um, shine the light. And Pluto, because Pluto is involved, and the, the third house is Gemini. It's also about how we think. So this can be like a like a little bit of a mental health um, situation here. So I hope you are taking care of your health and find, ask, ask for support if needed. Although um, some good quality time alone, um, I would recommend it. Uh, but if you feel that, you know, you feel that something is wrong, like you if you have your intuition, uh, is telling you something is not good with with you, or uh, go see the doctor or find help. This is also good, you know. If you need if you need somebody to talk to or find a, a therapist you like or you trust, because this is as I said, this is all about trust. Find somebody you can trust to talk to and um, to help you with any struggles you have. Now it's time to, you know, or if you have somebody who you don't, then it's time to let them go because it is a full moon after all. So it's time to let go of. Of, of the health and it's not really a health okay see this is the this is the health i call this the health axis and then um the square to pluto is not an easy one for sure this is one of the, the you know pluto and pluto is about aquarius which is in our mind you know aquarius is a lot about our mind right so um this this comes to me that you might you know just want to take care of your uh, your mental health in this sense um th this might also bring you some issues with your siblings uh, some um some com or, or your neighbors that the things that you really don't want to deal with because you just you know you usually you just go away when you know things get tough not, not because you uh, want to escape it's just that you don't have the the energy or capacity or capacity to deal with heavy things you like things to be light and you know and optimistic you know this is too heavy for you like oh my god you know so um if anybody's putting pressure on you your neighbors or your siblings or you know just uh, immediate environment you might feel you want to relieve um and not have this pressure on you put on you anymore um so uh yes it's time to retreat in that sense don't get anybody manipulate you or put your situation or blackmail you you know this and that um, don't get stuck in that way um let's see so yeah so you have jupiter also here yeah so the so with with uranus you know uranus square i know uranus is in this house it's really squaring but it's still here uh, it can be unpredictable, you know, when we have, we're going to have this um, conjunction today, exact, we're going to see what, what are going to be the longer impacts of Jupiter and Uranus conjunction, but it can be anything. It's it expe it's expecting the unexpected. So here, this is your, this is your health. This is your everyday life, this is your routines. You can expect the unexpected. You don't need extra pressure on you. Like at this time, you don't need it. So, uh, you know, and, and in your in your house of joy, so there's Venus there, which is good. She's giving you know some things you you, you and then there's Mercury retrograde here, so you might want to escape and do something uh, fun and joyful. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't take any risks, so be careful in that sense. You are risk taker. Um, 
um, just nurture yourself more, you know, and nurture your mind. Um, just read a book, you know, watch a documentary. You don't have to, you know, put yourself in some kind of other situations, but, you know, do something that is good for your soul that makes you kind of happy and joyful. Um, yeah. Uh, and whereas, yeah, so the Mars is in a family. Yeah. So there's, there's be, you know, because Mars is ruling this uh, traditionally. And this is a family and home also, you know, some misconceptions, misunderstandings, you know, lies, the siblings, home. I'm not liking this. So if you can avoid any serious discussions or are putting, if anybody's putting pressure on you from your home and family and siblings, just um, tell them that you're not up to it. You know, look at that. This is authority coming over you from your family, obligate, family obligations. So, um, you know, you just tell them not now or give yourself a few days. Um, and especially when Mars goes here into Aries, you're going to, you're going to have some fun anyway. So until they say hello, until then, and, and take care of your mental health. Okay. Good luck, Edge. Okay. Three more to go. Rotate here. Okay. Um, Capricorns. Okay. So this is happening in your um, 11th house and fifth house. Okay. So the sun is shining light on your friends, on your community, on your groups that you are involved. So what is happening in that area? Okay. Uh, how, how are your creative projects connected with your friendships and community? Um, are, your, are your kids, if you have them, um, some kind of shining light on... Um, you know, on your on your on your work. Maybe you are involved in some kind of charity work because you know Capricorns uh, are very successful. Usually, they're always you know CEOs and their managers. And then you know maybe you um, um, you you have uh, involvement in uh, any charities or stuff like that. And then you can you know, help others through that as well. So that that's a good thing. Maybe there's some something happening in there. I like that. Uh, Pluto is in your house of money. There you go. So this is wealth, power. What is what is Pluto? Wealth and power. So feeling uh, empowered by um, the income that you have, feeling empowered by um, the money you're making, about your skills and talents. And then you know this this is not this is not not as this is really actually pretty for you, um, Capricorns. I need to say, um, it's it's connecting you know your your creativity with um, your community and and your wealth. And your power, you got you. You might feel really, really uh, powerful in this sense, you know. Um, and you might gain um, some insights on um, how to make money, um, what your properties are, what your values are, and how can this reflect in your community that you live in, and with your kids or creative projects. Very good. This is this is. I feel this is very good for you. Uh, also, um, um, you have Uranus and Jupiter. Here in the fifth house, there might be some ha things happening with your kids if you have them, or with creative projects. Maybe there are something growing there, something unexpected. Um, so romance. If you're single, maybe if even even if you're not single, hmm. <laughs> you know there might be some new 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 things coming up. You might feel more more confident, um, you know, to ask somebody out or you know to even to have some fun i know for capricorns it can be hard but you might even have some fun with this you know having some uh, money and have some fun with all of this uh, yeah i like this i think this is good for capricorns this this full moon i think it will um you know uh, bring some action um yeah so just watch so again watch out how you how you how you communicate with others this can be some kind of issue so your style of communication um just work on that or there's there could be some um Especially with your friends, you know, um, be be honest, be truthful, um, you know, and then think about, you know, if if your friends are that to you as well, because the Mars is here with Neptune in the third house of communication, ruling this moon with your friendships. So just just um, double check if if your the groups you're involved with or maybe charities or friendships, if everybody's there on their point and telling you the truth. Okay. Um, is, where is your yeah so mercury retrograde is here that's family and I, I, yeah i wouldn't put much point on that so overall very good just make sure that um you double check everything you hear twice okay good full moon for you capricorns i like that awesome 
Okay. Aquarius. Oh well, yeah, of course you have your Aquarius have, have you have Pluto here um, for the next 20 years. So you, you've got to feel empowered for sure. When Pluto goes to a first house, it can many people say it's hard and, and it can can be, but it can be so powerful. Imagine um feeling that you finally are getting control of, of your life, of who you are and what you're doing. It might be not, you know, not an easy journey, but it's the best reward ever. Uh, I have to tell you from a personal experience, all the Pluto transits I had were hard. They were really, really hard. But after they passed, I never felt better. I, I, you know, it's it's a change bringer for sure. Change bringer. Okay. So this full moon, yeah. So this is also impacting your home and family life, and especially um, the the sun is shining on your. Um, on your reputation and fame and how you project and promote yourself how you advertise yourself how people how you're seen in the world right how are you seen in the world so um so with, with this pluto i think you know with this pluto in your first house and especially with this full moon i think many people might um start uh, respecting you more and even being afraid of you in a in a sense you know um like you are getting your power back and nobody can, you know, um, tell you what to do. It might be, it looks hard and I know it's hard and, you know, you might not feel it right now. And, um, you know, you might feel like you're losing control and you don't have control. And there's all these things are happening in your family and your, in your career that, but, um, on, on, trust me on another point, I think many people will, will, um, find you more powerful than you even think you are. That's, that's the whole point. People, you know, um, don't don't really don't get involved with any of the politics, your house politics and your business politics. Your, um, you know what is happening in there um, because behind the scenes, I think people might find you um, um, much more stronger and um, than than you are even realize. Um, especially because you you have this face of detachment that you leave as an Aquarius. Nobody can read you very well it's going to be bring even more fear and because you have pluto now on your side i call this is on your side not against you pluto in the first house absolutely absolutely um what is important here because you know this is all happening in your second house of money uh not to um make any decisions about uh, how you make your income or many, many, making any changes. Um, work hard and, um, and it's going to pay off at the end. Saturn is here. Just don't make any changes. Don't quit your job. Don't do anything. You need your, 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 your income because this can also bring some um, um, instability in your income in a sense. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't, don't make any changes. Just, you know, you're, you're growing to be more and more empowered. So good for you. Good for you. Um, yeah. So in, in your, yeah. So family, family can bring some sudden changes. So there's family life, you know, you might move suddenly or there might be some situations here that might impact, you know, your career, your, your family decisions that are going to be unexpected might also um, affect your uh, family, your career life. Um, so there's going to be, you know, this, this is one of those, those uh, things that are impacting your life directly a, a lot because it's, you know, um, are you, are you, you know, is your family becoming bigger? There's Jupiter here, you know, maybe some pregnancies or unexpected pregnancies in that sense that are coming up, um, your family life is changing and then what is happening, you know, um, with, with your career um and feeling all this transformation it can be psychologically hard but you can detach from it I, you have the strength i think aquarius you have much more strength within you than you even realize because you're also you're, you're very much in your mind but um this this not it's not an easy like for, for all the fixed signs this is not an easy full moon but maybe releasing some of the things that are not working um can help you uh, uh, can empower you for sure yeah, I have very, I believe in you so much, Aquarius, so much. Okay. And the last one, it's, but not the least, the last but not the least are Pisces. Okay. So we have the moon in the ninth and sun in the third. 
what I like here is that we have all this, you know, so for Pisces, it's not easy because they have Saturn and all these things are happening now um, in the first house. And okay, there you go. Look at that. And Pluto is where? Here. So this is, this could be hard. So for Pisces, although they're not a fixed sign, um, this could be hard for you just because, first of all, um, this Pluto is in 12th house. Um, absolutely the best time for Pisces to connect with uh, divinity, with higher consciousness, with going to a therapy, um, uh, doing anything that can help you, um, like, not just meditation. I think meditation is something you're already doing because you have this tendency to escape the reality and every time you escape in, escape in your own little daydreaming, you're kind of meditating already. So this has to be, um, oh, thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Hannah. <laughs> thank you, Kara. You ladies, really, really. And everybody, Damien as well. Oh, Damien, Damien, Damien. I need to remember. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Okay. So for Pisces, I said, so your, your meditation is, Every, every day dreaming is meditation for you. Oh, thank you, Nicole. Oh, so much love today, guys. Look at this is this is Jupiter Uranus. Unexpected love. In, in <laughs> oh, that is so nice for, for you. Thanks so much. I love it. This is my my, my Jupiter Uranus um, blessing is in giving having so much love from you guys. Who needs the to win the lottery when I have you? That's for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let's go to Pisces because Pisces are having a hard time because of this Saturn. Um, it's a lot of responsibilities and they don't like it, a lot of restrictions, a lot of feeling uh, nebulous. Um, and then, you know, Neptune, although um, usually they like Neptune, this is now, you know, it can still um, uh, uh, have uh, unclear their, their path because the, they have Mars in the first house. You know, they want to do something, but then the path is still not clear. So, uh, escapism in the worst way it can happen and with, with feeling restricted so for Pisces it's very important to find uh, a really healthy expression um, uh, of, of actions I don't know if that does that make sense you find uh, I know that art can be one of those and I wish that you go towards art and not addiction because for you guys can be addiction and um uh this so the the sun is shining on the ninth house so there you go ninth house is also the house of god as they call it right of higher belief and the pluto is here so try to connect with your higher belief system whoever that is for you and actually work on it because mars and neptune are together instead of being self-destructive instead of being a feel like a victim or sacrificing yourself for um for things that you are not sure why, because you might feel that, why am I sacrificing? What is happening? Um, um, you know, and your constant uh, urge and need to help others who are in need, um, you know, it can drain you. So instead of, instead of, um, you know, it, it, this could also happen. I don't know, I'm just, I always feel for Pisces. I have a soft spot for Pisces, soft spot, because I feel that always, they always, um, uh, uh, using their energy to help others and then they forget about themselves. So find a healthy, um, expression of of, of of deeper connection. So you find time to, to uh, learn because moon is here and sun is shining light moon here. Find a, another, uh, you can learn something, learn some new technique or something that can connect you with your belief system in a deeper level. So if you're just meditating, go deeper. Find some new way of, of healthy expressing and connecting with divinity. That's definitely, it's very important for Pisces because they, they really feel lost and restricted here. Um, and with Pluto here, it's, it can be, you know, not easy on, on their mind and subconscious, okay? So overall, um, yeah, um, music, dance. Look, uh, um, Mars is in your first house. It's calling you to act physically or something. With Neptune there, this is a dance combination for me. So think about dancing or having some dance ritual to connect you with your divinity. You know, you know how many people have these dance rituals. Yes, do that and uh, and um, empower yourself psychologically in that way. Connect yourself 
um yeah and this is the in, in even in your local community if you can find some local dance community or something um i think that would be really good for you awesome yeah i think that's it this is guys this is it thank you very much for um being here with me today and giving me all this love i really really appreciate it i feel blessed and loved and uh, thankful and grateful Whew, this was good one hour 40 minutes okay uh overall as i mentioned this full moon i just want a quick summary um it's all about um finding the truth what is your truth uh finding it um and watch out for for people that might control you or manipulate you or in believing their their truth which is not yours okay there will be like a little summary for me at the end um oh hello hello my spanish friend hola hola <laughs> everybody's here thank you so much uh for everything for support uh happy full moon um uh, enjoy this jupiter uranus conjunctions today um i hope you you feel awakened and shaken up uh, and removed from uh, your comfort zones to do something bigger for your life and for um for life in general awesome thank you very much hugs and kisses uh you'll be seeing me more here doing my own things uh although i will not uh, stop doing collaborations um yeah please leave a comment if you have any comment uh if you want to book a reading i'm available for readings uh on, you can book it on my website www.jasminabrazovicastrology.com and um yeah if you i have a newsletter if you want to go you subscribe on my um on my website as well then I, I i usually do a monthly newsletter on what's coming up uh, next month and that's it for me now i will keep you informed if i have anything new coming up which i'll probably will i'm doing a, a, a huge thing on the 29th that's all i want to say so let's see how that goes okay hugs and kisses as my son would say um ha, oh moni she, she goes oh i was on instagram i finally found you here excellent happy no it's a happy full moon nicole but i'll take it i'll take it <laughs> awesome hugs and kisses guys have a great weekend and happy uranus uh jupiter conjunction as well good luck